As Israelis prepare to head to the polls on April 9, Benjamin Netanyahu faces perhaps the toughest election campaign of his long political career. The prime minister faces multiple corruption investigations, not to mention a formidable opponent. Netanyahu's Likud party, which has held power since 2009, has trailed in some election polls the blue and white party led by the former military general Benny Gantz. But Netanyahu, in office continually during this latest stint for a decade, has received plenty of help for his re-election bid from his good friend, U.S. President Donald Trump. Here's what you need to know. HOW does its work, and who are the contenders? In this election, 40 odd political parties are vying for a spot in the Neset, Israel's 120 seat parliament. But only about 10 to 14 are expected to secure enough votes to make it in. And two parties are certain to stand head and shoulders above the rest Netanyahu's Likud and Gantz's Blue and White. Likud is a party on the right of Israeli politics, while Blue and White has positioned itself as centrist. Israel election campaign, polls, rumors and upheaval. Both of these parties are expected to win about 30 seats. In most election polls, Gantz has shown a consistent lead over Netanyahu, albeit by only a handful of seats, but that's not the end of the story. Both leaders know they will need to rely on the support of smaller parties to form a coalition. Here, Netanyahu has a clear advantage. A number of smaller right-wing parties have already pledged their support for him including one with its roots in a party band in the 1980s for being racist likely giving him an easier path to building a coalition. However, those smaller parties still need to cross Israel's electoral threshold of three. 25% of the national vote. If they fail to do this, securing no representation in the next parliament, then Netanyahu's path to another term as prime minister may look more difficult. Is Benny Gantz a breath of fresh air? Or more of the same? Benny Gantz is a rookie to Israeli politics. He finished his four year term as chief of staff of the Israel Defense Forces in 2015 and then waited for the required cooling off period to elapse before entering politics late last year. The party he founded, called Israeli Resilience, consisted entirely of candidates who had never served in the Neset before. But to boost his chances of unseating Netanyahu, he merged his new party with two others to form the Blue and White Party, the name chosen to reflect the colors of Israel's flag. The merger brought into the fold many who had previously served, not just in the Neset, but in government as well, including Yair Lapid, who was once finance minister, and Moshe Yadalon, who had been defense minister. In addition, Gantz's time as chief of staff has already made him a known commodity in Israel. He was often photographed during high-level meetings with political leaders, including Netanyahu, especially after leading the Israeli military through two wars in Gaza in 2012 and 2014. Because of the country's emphasis on defense and security, it is not at all uncommon for military leaders to enter politics. Former Prime Ministers Ehud Barak and Yitzhak Rabin both served as the Israeli Army's chief of staff. If Gantz is a breath of fresh air, it is because some voters see him as untainted by Israeli politics. Even so, with his long career in public service and centrist leanings, it would be wrong to see him as anti-establishment. Rather, his platform is far more anti-Netanyahu, which just adds to the sense that this is very much a two-horse race.